Hi and welcome to Ottawa Eats. I'm your host Tom Schock. Today we're in the heart of the market down on Murray Street in a restaurant that will become an institution in this city. French cuisine with a bit of a twist and of course, what would dinner be without wine? Sir Lee, today on Ottawa Eats. This is Neil. Neil, thank you so much for Hi. having us. My pleasure. Thank uh, you. This, this is a, a beautiful patio and we're going to step inside there in a few minutes and do mm -hmm. a couple of dishes. But uh, first of all, tell us about uh, your place. I know there's a little bit of stress, but we'll get into the emotional support later on after the show. Maybe when we have a couple of drinks, but why do this? Why, why do it? And what's so different about your place? Uh, well, it's a passion. I've been in the industry for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I love wine. I'm a sommelier. I love food. Uh, you know, if, I'm, if I wasn't doing it here, I'd be doing it at home and <laughs> entertaining people all the time. <laughs> so it's enjoyable to come do it and, you know, make a living out of it. Uh, and uh, just to bring some joy and some different sort of stuff to the Ottawa, Ottawa scene, the great Ottawa, you know, restaurant scene that keeps right. growing and growing. So. Yeah. Um, I think we differentiate ourselves a little bit. We kind of, uh, like a lot of people come up to me and say we kind of have a sort of a Montreal feel. Yeah. We're a little bit, uh, we're doing a modern take on um, French cuisine. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't sort of restrict ourselves to like the old sort of traditional French dishes. But yeah. We kind of go with the seasons. Uh, okay. Like the markets, we're located in the market and the market's sort of our, you know, our guide. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever's fresh and seasonal, we like to uh, take and use and try and create some interesting fun dishes. Okay, so why uh, the French kind of influence with cooking? Why not something like Czech Republic? Uh, well, really for me, question, as, obviously, a, but, as yeah. a sommelier, yeah. just the, the natural pairings. I love French right. wines, Okay. Um, you know, classic sauces, mm -hmm. wines, you know, it's a little bit easier to pair, make a sort of enjoyable, we'll say, evening. And uh, it's a come in, have a tasting menu, right. uh, enjoy, take some time. You yeah. know, it's not just a hustle bustle, Okay. Eat a quick, quick little meal. So, yeah, Sir Lee, what's that from exactly? Uh, that's a it's a wine terminology yeah. for resting on the lees. Okay, um, and by doing so, it's an extraction of flavor. Oh, so it kind of works with uh, food and uh, wine. So we're trying to take, like I said, locally sourced ingredients and mm -hmm. extract the most flavor we possibly can. Okay, uh, and as, a, as a sommelier, mm -hmm. I'm going to put you on the spot here. So you're going to give us your top three uh, wines. Whether they're available or not is irrelevant, but the top three that you've ever had. Oh, uh, well, wow. That's so, tough. you know, you usually have that movie question. This yeah. is sort of your des deserted island kind of, oh. what are the three wines you're Ooh. taking with you to give you a hangover? What am I taking? Oh, that's tough because I've had more than three good wines. We don't need life. an admission <laughs> of how much you drink. No, no, no. We just no, need no. your favorites is what we need. It's, well, with me, it's hard because it's just my mood changes all the time. You know, okay. and so Nobody else you know, around you. I've had, island, great, I've had right? a great, amazing bottle of, you know, 1997 Grange, you know, that'll sell for a lot. But yeah. if my mood, like on a day, a hot day like this on the patio, yeah. you know, a beautiful Tavel would be just as equally as enjoyable for me okay so right. so we've got two we need one more oh, okay well then you know personal favor if anyone's buying me christmas gifts then you know a nice bottle of uh shadow enough to pop from um uh we'll say uh uh, Chateau Beau Cristal, you know, if there's a 1994 out there, that'd be fantastic. All right, so <laughs> Christmas is coming early for Neil, and that's fine. Uh, so there you go. And we're going to get into some of the food as well. And uh, yeah, we're excited to step in your kitchen. Thank you Excellent. very much for having Thank us. Thank you. All right. So we're in the kitchen with Colin, the executive chef. Colin, thank you for having us. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, I see that we both fancy ourselves bearded men. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like to maintain it as well. Right? Yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you got a little gray coming in there. I know. Does that concern you? Not yet. Yeah, well, no. you're only 19, so it concerns me. No, I'm definitely not 19. Okay, all right. So I'm actually 48. Yeah, perfect. No, I'm not. I'm only 23. All right. I'm lying again. <laughs> uh, so uh, Colin here, uh, he's going to show us some of the dishes that we're going to be sampling here today. Uh, we've got our friend John over here. We were told not to talk to him at all in any uh, respect. So he's going to be doing some plating for us as well. So let's talk a little bit about you, though, and why you decided to step into a kitchen, cook for other people rather than cook for yourself. Why, uh, why are you doing this? What's, what's wrong with you? Oh, lots, but we don't have enough time. It's no, only a six and a half minute show. segment. Different yeah. show. Yeah. Um, cooking's always been a passion of mine. Uh, I've been cooking since I was three years old. Mm -hmm. Been in the business for 23 years. Okay. Um, Surly is an extremely really nice venue. Yeah. Uh, modern, uh, contemporary French cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think we have a lot to work with. There's a lot of local fresh ingredients in the city. Um, the style of cooking that we're doing is something that really, really inspires me. It's something I, I love doing myself. So well, here we are. We're going to do a yeah. couple of dishes for you. Okay, great. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about your inspiration as we go throughout the show, sure. but let's uh, start with something here. So what's our first uh, dish right now? All right, so Mr. John Predecante, <laughs> hopefully I didn't butcher his last name too, too much. Not yeah. too much. You're is, one of the better ones. Is going to do uh, what right now is a signature dish here at Surly, mm -hmm. and it's a beef tartare dish. Okay. So it's a hand-chopped, uh, medium to fine coarse uh, beef tenderloin. Okay. And then we have a fermented cabbage, grated carrots, we have a, a compressed grilled romaine lettuce, uh, we've got a smoked apple, a vinaigrette, it's all tossed in, we do a sous vide egg yolk that we put on the side that is really nice and mm -hmm. creamy and velvety, it comes with some fine herbs, some nice toasted crostinis, some beautiful pickled carrots, um, right now we're really really trying to source out as much local as we can right uh, we've been talking to a lot of the farmers lately mm -hmm. um, and right farms is uh, and Dan O'Brien our beef local beef suppliers yeah. that have some beautiful beautiful products uh, we're using Acorn Creek farms Rito Parn farms for produce and such so on and right. so forth yeah. and you can really really taste the flavors the mm -hmm. freshness uh, and the beautiful thing about it is that you have to use these products within a few days because they're so natural, they're so right, fresh. There's no preservatives. Nope. Yeah, right. And okay. so it, it puts a lot more work and emphasis onto what it is that we're doing. Yeah. Because we have to be so much more on top of the ball, mm -hmm. making sure that everything's done properly, everything's cared for, you know, we're getting smaller portions, smaller quantities in so that we're getting them in as fresh as possible. And with your uh, beef tartare, when was the first time that you really tried that and you actually liked it? Did you like it the first time or something that... No, first time. Yeah? Um, very, very young. Um, my mother is going to kill me for saying this, actually, <laughs> on TV. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit of a brat as a child. Right. And I think my parents tried to get me to eat liver and onions, escargot, tartare. So they tested you, they pushed you a little bit. They right? thought it was a punishment. Oh, so, okay. Um, yeah, and other than that, no, I love it. Yeah, it's uh, it's food that I've always that I've grown accustomed to that mm -hmm. I've loved since day one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I guess that's a life lesson for new parents out there. I'm yeah. a new parents, so if you think you're punishing your kids, look out, they might turn into a chef. There you so, go. Could be worse. You, yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you might get some good meals when you're uh, when you're old and you can't <laughs> take care of yourself, and you got even more grain. Yeah, here. exactly. Uh, it was our plan all along, son. Yeah, sure, sure it was, sure it was. Okay. So this is a nice, this, so traditionally uh, tartare, you would put it sort of almost like in a shaping dish. Normally. You would. So why, why do it like this? Is it just a style thing for you? Or? Just a presentation. Okay. Um, bigger plates, mm -hmm. keep a little more space, keep it tighter. Yeah. Uh, and then we, we'll, we'll still fill the plates up. Yeah. Keep the egg yolk, because generally the egg is basically either infused mm -hmm. or part of the actual tartare. Right. We have to put it on side. We like to showcase, so what he's doing now is a cashew puree. Oh. So it's kind of to basically just showcase all of your ingredients. Mm -hmm. So instead of having everything combined, which is right. usually what a tartare is, yep. this at the end, it'll show all your flavors. You can see everything together. And it, so it's a nice sharing dish. Okay. Eating is a visual. Right. A lot of times you yeah. eat with your eyes before you eat with your mouth. Yeah. So it's one of those things, instead of having everything completely, all, like everything is combined, but mm -hmm. it's still all s at the same time kind of showcased separate. And then this comes with crostini, so you know, you put it on individually, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Someone's not a big fan of the cashew, they don't have that necessarily have it, they can just go with the beef. Mm -hmm. And then it's not an overly heavy dressing vinaigrette, we, re we really want to showcase the flavor of the beef, which is really, really good quality. You had mentioned the farms that you're dealing with, how much of that is, uh I know that each chef is a little bit different, but do you are you, are you visiting some of these farms? Are you talking to these guys like on I, a regular basis? Or oh my god, it? I've had relationships with some of them for over a decade. Okay. Um, I don't get to get out much. Uh, <laughs> chefs work. I know. A yeah. Fair, the hours are a little ridiculous. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's not uh, yeah. it's not bankers' hours. Uh, <laughs> but getting out to the farms yeah. is not overly idealistic. Okay. Uh, sometimes I do. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I go pick up some of the stuff myself, mm -hmm. but it's maybe once a month, okay. once every six yeah. weeks. But yeah. no, I talk to these gentlemen emails self or even we text now yeah. pretty much on a bi-daily basis right um, okay. as soon as a friend as soon as they have something that, that new that comes in or they've got you know something like I, I just got this in or would yeah. you like this uh, you know uh, some of the farmers they only get 
because they raise things, raise other animals, they only have small quantities of right. certain things. We're not buying from a mass quantity supplier. Mm -hmm. So smaller place like this, we like to pick and choose a little bit of mm -hmm. what it is that we're serving. Like we have a, we have a tasting menu on our menu, yeah. so it's really good. We can run a tasting menu for about a week, so we can get a small portion of something that we can serve, like uh, venison tenderloin. Mm -hmm. of, you get a few nice loins, and then you can serve that for a few days, just on your tasting menu, okay. and it's beautiful. We're actually going to do a little bit of that up later. Okay, excellent. All right, looking forward to that. So yeah. I think we're pretty close here. Are we? Are there we finished? Go. Oh yeah, we're ready to go. Yeah. There you go, sir. Yeah. So uh, John has a job for another day or so. Yes. So that's good. Yeah. Oh. I'm kidding. It was supposed to be a secret. Oh, okay. It's my personal favorite tartare in Ottawa right now. I don't know if I'm biased saying that. You're a little bit, a little bit, a little bit biased, but, but that's uh, okay. It's good. It's, yeah. yeah, it's really good. Hopefully you guys get to try it after all this is done. Okay, there you go. Beef tartare, like you've never seen it before. Your regular meat, like your bologna, that's a meat, right? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, it's not bologna. Okay. So we're talking about something that maybe not a lot of people would consider whenever they go to a restaurant. But venison is something that I, I just absolutely love that cut. It's yes. just something that's an amazing type of meat to work with. So um, tell us a little bit about this dish and why you're using venison in this dish. It's not typically found in restaurants okay. in Ottawa. Um, I haven't seen it in a lot of restaurants. It's mm -hmm. a very nice, delicate. Uh, we're using a tenderloin, yeah. so it's nice and delicate. It's got a similar texture and components of beef. It's a little bit of gamey to it like that. It's very nice, very flavorful. It pairs well with numerous amounts of wine. Mm -hmm. uh, we have got a, way, a great wine selection here. So, you know, it just seemed like a really nice dish. Mm -hmm. um, we have nice chanterelle mushrooms that are in season right now. So we're just trying to compare it. It's got a lot of earthy tones to it. Right. So it goes with the, goes with the chanterelles as well, which really goes well with a few of the wines that we have. Yeah. Neil would be better to ask about exactly <laughs> about the wine. So yeah. that's his department. Okay, so you have a couple of things on the go here. All right. so you, what, yeah. What's going on? So basically these are just some local veg. We've got some little Tokyo turnips, asparagus, uh, little baby carrots from Acorn Creek, Creek Farms, mm -hmm. and then some, uh, just some little blanch cauliflowers. And uh, so, duck fat potatoes. We sous vide our fingerling potatoes okay. in duck fat and a little bit of brown butter and French thyme from Acorn Farm Creeks as well. Right. So they've actually been cooking in our sous vide machine for about four hours now. They're almost done. Right. So by the time you guys are done, yeah. my potatoes will be ready for service for the All night. right. So yeah, there's no poking the holes in the potato with a fork, putting it in the microwave kind of thing, right? No, I don't like right. microwaves. Okay. Microwaves yeah. are only good for reheating yeah. my coffee. This is not microwave cooking with Colin. <laughs> this is Ottawa Eats. Gotcha. All right. Absolutely. Um, so what what is the one meat? I know we're working with venison right now, but is there a meat that you find particularly challenging that you, um, you kind of want to work around or that that sometimes gives you some trouble that you'd like to conquer it and master it? Um, skate wing, but it's a fish. Okay. Real difficult to clean. Skate wing? Skate wing. It's what a is fish that fans out and the bones literally, they go all the way through the entire fish. Okay. Yeah, it's I, thought I would just be like, yeah, it looks hard. I'll leave that aside maybe. It is. Yeah, okay. But yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoy right. that. So yeah. sometimes... A challenge, right? Exactly. It's fun to be able to practice and, you know, try and do things that you're not overly good at all the time. What's one of the most glorious mistakes you ever made in your career? Oh my God, glorious. Every chef makes mistakes. You know, it's, it's the failure aspect of it because you have to, otherwise you won't learn from it, right? So what's, what's the one where you're like, ooh, maybe even was in your own kitchen when you were trying to impress somebody? I'm or? trying to think, because there was once when I was young where I made a dish and I think I just blocked it out because I don't know what it was, <laughs> but it was the worst thing I've ever put in my mouth. Really? Oh, it was. And it was probably one of those times where you were starving. You're sitting it, down, you could take a big bite. And you're it like, nope. took about six hours to cook. And ah. by the by the time I, it was all said and done, I was very, very displeased with myself. <laughs> and I'll admit that on camera. It's good. It's if good I, to admit your mistakes. You know? If I could tell you exactly what it was, but I think I, I think I just blocked it out of, out of my entire memory. So this is a very rich uh, borderlay sauce. Oh wow! Which takes us about eight to ten hours to make. Okay. Very very flavorful. Okay. A 
That's beautiful. A little fleur de sel on it. And then here are our cassis style cherries. That's a nice little touch. The uh, is that for the sweetness itself, or are you looking for the tartness in there? Um, no, it's a, a little, actually a little bit of both. Okay. The the sweetness will come out and really complement because there's a lot of red wine in the sauce as well. Mm -hmm. So the alcohol, the dark flavors of the alcohol will pair well with the wine and the cherries. But then you have the acidity part that kind of balances everything out together. Wow. There you go. Look at that. I like how you go, there you go. It's like you just made a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> like, Here's your ham and cheese, guys. Uh, you know, just whip that up. No, not a big deal. You yeah, know? my wow. friends stopped asking me how to make things because they're like, oh, it's easy. And after about five minutes, they're like, okay, stop, never mind. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so if you're looking for this on the menu, what's the name they're looking for? Uh, it's going to be our venison tenderloin dish. We have a whole wave of new menus coming out in right. the next two weeks. Yeah. We're going to be offering uh, a three-course and a five-course tasting menu as well. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to just come in, have a few small bites, a nice glass of wine. Yeah. You know, nothing overly filling. Yeah. Well, we're excited for the adventure that you're going to take us on. That's very cool. If this is any kind of indication, we're going to do a third dish. So stick around. In the meantime, I'm just going to stare and admire your peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, there you go. It's beautiful. You guys are allowed to eat it too. I'm just going to look at it for now. It seems like a shame to ruin it, you know? with Colin. You remember Colin, right? Yeah, he was on the show previously, just like a couple of minutes ago. Anyway, so we're going to do another dish here. Uh, what are we doing this time? Uh, right. We did peanut butter and jelly last time. Yeah, so how did that go? Pretty good? I thought, it went, I thought it went pretty well. So, so. What is this, craft dinner? Or is that <laughs> Next, what we're doing? That'll be the fourth dish <laughs> if, we, if we have time. Okay, um, but this actually, obviously this looks like it's got lots of color in it and lots of different textures. So, so we're basically just doing our Bollocan Bay uh, sea scallop dish. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a nice summer snap pea risotto mm -hmm. and then just a fresh uh, Burr Blanc on it, and then we have a, a, a roasted red pepper and fermented chili uh, gel that we're going to put on. Mm -hmm. Just nice, light, refreshing. Uh, Burr Blanc is generally a thick, heavy, buttery cream sauce. But we make it a little bit lighter. We just put a little bit on for the acid. Right. Nice little bit of flavor. French sauce goes with the theme of the restaurant. So it's a traditional kind of French yes. sauce. Okay. Right. All right. Um, one of the dishes that we want to be doing for the new menu mm -hmm. is. Uh, a sea urchin, an uni beurre blanc. Oh, okay. Yeah, so really? it uh, would be a little bit unorthodox. Um, let's just uh, hope it works out. All right, yeah, fingers crossed. I'm going to see if you can multitask as well. So uh, while you're doing this Absolutely. and explaining what's going on, I'm going to throw some rapid fire questions at you. Okay? Absolutely, go All for right. it. You ready? Okay, <laughs> top three least favorite sports that you would have to play. That I would have to play? Yeah, that you Track would and field. Okay, so you're terrible at track and field? I don't run. Ah, <laughs> okay. Um, tennis, again, okay. too much running. Right. And I would say the last one would be probably badminton. <laughs> you don't strike me as a badminton player. No, no. offense. That's no, none taken. Okay. All right. Um, an unnatural fear of an animal. Which one is it? Unnatural fear of an animal? Yeah. If you met one in the wild, you're like, oh my god, and you had to run the other way. A rhino. That's a fair <laughs> answer, I think. Yeah. All right. And uh, if you met a woman of your oh, dreams, Jesus. what would be the absolute worst thing that you think you would say to her that would absolutely ruin your chances? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have enough time. No. No. Be that elaborate? Hey, uh, I'm a little too open. Well, my answer to that question is I'm married. Ah, there you, you go. Know, see? So that would totally ruin your chances. So you don't have an answer for that one? No. No? I definitely don't have an answer to that one. Would you just stare and just do the duh oh, face? No. I'd, I'd be myself. I would... Uh, uh, I don't know if that's a good idea. That's what I mean. It's, just, right. it's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> would you start with a knock-knock joke, probably? That'll be my new go-to. <laughs> go I will definitely try knock-knock jokes. I'm going to have to Google a few of them. Now. <laughs> Don't do that. It's a. Uh, it's one of those rabbit holes that you end up two hours later. And you know, wow, what? Where did I start? How did I get here? So, so what are you doing right here? So this is just more for presentation, a little okay. bit of flavor. It's a, a roasted red pepper, and fermented chili gel. Mm-hmm. We're just putting on for a little bit of aesthetics. 
And then we've got uh, just a little bit of rolled up zucchini. And are these cooked or are these raw, the zucchini? Zucchinis, the, they're raw. Okay. Cool. Brush them with a little bit of uh, lemon and oil and salt mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Wow. And then this is just a little bit of lemon bourbon. How many different varieties of this sauce is are, are there? Is there? Can you make it as many as you like? You basically put your own spin on it kind of thing? You're just using that as a base? Yeah, exactly. You okay. can. Traditionally, though, it's just, this is just basically a traditional one with some butter, cream, lemon, shallots, so on and so forth. There you go. And that's it. Again, another peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Like, no big deal. Almost craft <laughs> dinner. I love how you make it look so easy. Okay, so take us through it real quick. Point out exactly what's what. All right, so just on the bottom, you have your... Uh, your green pea risotto. Mm -hmm. um, then you have the colicum base seared scallops on top. Yep. Your bit of little bit of zucchini rolls, local veg, your beurre blanc, and these are um, fennel fronds. Mm -hmm. Just little tips of the fennel. So it gives a little bit of anise, oh, a little bit of licorice nice. flavor, okay. the compliments with it. And then you have your uh, roasted red pepper and fermented chili gel. All right, there you go. So uh, sandwiches and craft dinner by Colin which you will never see here. Obviously, you've just seen what he's done in a very short amount of time. So uh, come on down and check it out. Colin, thank you so much for no this. No worries, my pleasure. Really Thanks appreciate it. This looks amazing. So we're gonna taste this in just a second and maybe Neil will even give us wine. I don't know, fingers crossed. So you've seen all the great food that we've uh, made today. Thank you, Neil, for making all the food. It was amazing. I don't think I have much to do with that. But yeah, okay. <laughs> right. yeah. uh, Surly Restaurant, you can find it on Facebook or Surly Auto on Instagram. And we've got these beautiful dishes. Of course, we got the breakdown of what everything is here, but you're also a sommelier. So let's mm -hmm. talk a really quickly about some of the wine that would go with some of these dishes. Well, certainly. Well, we do a really nice five course tasting menu and mm -hmm. with wine pairings, uh, that's sort of one of our signatures. So um, just a little sample of what we do on a regular basis. Lovely scallops, a nice little citrus um, risotto. For that, we'd kind of go with something uh, nice Chablis. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the nice citrus, little crisp apple sort of notes. Not too heavy, but you know the weight of the wine works well with the, the, the scallops themselves. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. For our signature sort of tartare dish, we'd like to probably pair something a little bit lighter bodied, white, uh, red. Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, in this case, we have a nice Beaujolais, mm -hmm. um, a Cru Beaujolais, so from the Fleury region. Okay. So sort of a little bit more sort of lighter sort of. Uh, uh, red berry sort of flavors coming out. Nice little soft acid, uh, acidity and soft tannins, which will really pair well with the tartare. Okay. And the venison? Venison, definitely something a little bit bigger, more round uh, mouthfeel, some nicer tannins to it. We have a really uh, lovely uh, crew, um, uh, Saint Emilion. The, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, for that, you're going to get more of the sort of blackberry intensity fruits. Right. And uh, sharper tannins, which will go well with uh, the rare yeah. venison. I like how you also set up our own little boat race here for us. <laughs> it's nice, too. So, obviously, we're not going to drink all of it. So not a chugging <laughs> Exactly. Uh, thanks for joining us on Auto Eats. So, here, we'll do a little cheers. Mm. Cheers. And cheers to you. And, uh, yeah, come on down and check it out. Sir Lee in the market. I'm going to drink this first. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell Colin that we drank before we ate. He'll be awesome. upset with us. <laughs> sorry, Colin.